Hello everyone, this is your host for Latina Role Models, Damari Ramos, and tonight we have... Joanne Reyes. Joanne Reyes. Yes. You were referred by Zoe. I interviewed her a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. and you were kind of telling me a little bit how you two are related, so you have a friend in common, but tonight it's about you. So, who is Joanne Reyes? I am a Latina. I am Puerto Rican. I was born, born in Ponce, <laughs> Puerto Rico. Oh, really? Yes, and I was raised in New York. Uh, and I actually um, relocated close to seven years ago from New York. So how was that? Because Puerto Rico is a different place, and then New York? Well, I, I came from Puerto Rico to New York when I was an infant, um, so I didn't feel the transition per se. However, I was very fortunate because my mom sent me to Puerto Rico every summer, not because I was a bad kid or anything, <laughs> but it was just so I could share time with my family. But the transition from New York to Florida in the beginning was challenging. But let's go back to that point that you just mentioned. I think mm -hmm. family is very, very important. And my son actually is in Puerto Rico right now. He's going to be 14 in the next couple of weeks. Wow. And I have sent him for probably three years now to Puerto Rico since he was nine. Because mm -hmm. for me, family is very important. And for him to have that connection with my sisters, with my mom, with the cousins. So you think I'm doing a good thing? Of course, of course. So I'm pretty sure because we were talking in Spanish. So your Spanish and English is perfect because because you've been there, you've been here, so the culture? The culture is super important. I never lost it. My mom made sure that I never lost it. So that's super important to me. Still today, my entire family, with the exception of my mother, resides in Ponce. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So then you were in, in New York, but you said the transition to Florida. How old were you when you transitioned to Florida? Oh, old. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Over 21. <laughs> Over 21. But um, it, was, it was difficult because I was an adult. And to relocate to a new state that's so much slower in pace than New York was a little challenging for me because I wasn't ready to slow down. Um, so for me, it was difficult, but I'm very happy to be here now. So when you look back, what is it that you miss from there besides the fast-paced environment? Oh, I miss the food. The food. <laughs> for sure. I miss the food. I miss the culture. Um, I miss the pace. And of course, I miss all my friends who are there and most definitely my mom who's still there. So now that you're in Florida, what is it that you're saying, at least I'm glad that I have this right here? Oh, there's so many things that I'm grateful for. Um, I would say parking is number one, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> parking is a huge deal in New York. Um, but I've never thought that I was going to be surrounded by so many Puerto Ricans. Um, so I love that. I love, it's almost like being on the island, but a little bit faster. Do you think this is your final destination or do you still see oversee another place? Um, I think this will definitely be my final destination for sure. So let's go back. Tell me about your education. Mm -hmm. Well, I went to Fordham University. Um, I first attended NYU. Um, I attended there for a year and then I transferred over to Fordham University. And so you enrolled what program? Uh, communications. So what was your goal with that? Yeah. My goal was always to be in the center of something to do with nonprofit. Why? I wanted to have that voice. My mom was a single mother. Uh, she came from Ponce when she was 15 years old with me in tow, believe it or not. And I always wanted to give Hispanic women a voice. So I wanted to make sure that I was able to do that. What do you saw in your mom that makes you feel like I need to help women? What was there then when you were shy, you were looking at her? Because I'm pretty sure you were looking at her and you, you thought about it, you know, mm -hmm. I wanted to create a change. Well. For me, it's almost being like a fairy godmother to other women um, because she didn't have her mother. Her mother died when she was four years old. So not being able to have that support, sometimes of having a parent or an adult present, um, there's a lot of people who experience that or maybe they are present, but mentally they're not there. Um, or like in my case, my mom, she worked a lot. So she was there for me financially, but maybe emotionally she could have not been there because she was working so hard. So I wanted to be that change for other women. So what is it that thing that you learned from your mom? That right now it's still guiding you. Oh, that you've got to work hard. Um, the way I look at it is that although we're Puerto Rican, or I still see us in a way as immigrants coming here and that you have to work hard. Um, no one ever died from working hard. Uh, you just, you got to work every day. You got to outwork the rest. So communications, did you finish in communication or did you change majors? No, I actually changed majors to organizational leadership. Organization. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about that because it's, it's a little bit of a change it for is. communication, but still there's... Uh, 
Yeah, organizational leadership and pretty much for the same thing because I wanted to go into human resources. Um, I found my calling within helping to do recruitment. Um, I felt like recruitment was best for me because I like to see people excel and I was able to identify who would be a good fit in specific jobs. Is it that what you're doing now? Yes. Tell me a little bit more about that. Um, I work for a resort and my primary job is to recruit and so I always look for the top talent in the industry. So what would be your advice for people who right now are looking for jobs? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they go for an interview and you're like, I wish they would have done this or that. What would be this, those recommendations? Let's talk about what you see and then later a little bit more what they're saying. Well, I think every area, every industry is different. But in my area within sales, I always say you can never overdress for an interview. I think you should always dress up for an interview regardless of what the position is. But sales, they really want people to have a great personality. They really want you to shine. Um, and I think interviews are different nowadays than they were 10, maybe 20 years ago where people were very serious about it. They want to see you smile. They want to see you laugh. They really buy your energy and that's what they want. And the interview starts from the time someone walks there. Oh, of course. Um, I've worked in other industries where we would have a receptionist per se and the receptionist would let you know what they were doing while they were waiting for you whether they were on the phone, whether they were asking questions about the company, um, whether they were sitting saying things inappropriate, they would tell you. They would tell you because that receptionist had a bird eye view to what they would be like on a normal case. Especially in sales. Mm -hmm. What is your passion? People. People. So I, that passion has taken you to a nonprofit. So you, it's yes. a circle. It is. No matter where you start, you know, you have that passion inside of you, so you go back. So. Tell me about your passion. My passion really is, I always say I suffer from altruism. Um, I love to see people grow. I love to see people excel. Um, I'm very passionate about learning about people and people from different cultures. So for me, people. So you're sitting on a board right now. What mm -hmm. is? I'm sorry? You're sitting on a board? Yes. Uh, Tell me for more about Dress that. for Success. My primary what is the program about? So Dress for Success actually started in New York um, back oh, in really? 1997, yes. Um, and it was by a college graduate. What she wanted to do was provide professional business clothing to women. And she started in a church basement. And now it has grown to over 145 cities. And it's actually global. So Dress for Success here in Orlando, what we do is we get clothing that's donated to us and we actually provide it to those who are in need of clothing for interviews. Um, they have to actually be able to verify that they're really going for a job, and then once they're hired, we actually offer them clothing for an entire week. We're working also with sponsors so they can get their hair done, their makeup done, nails done, so they have the entire look. So if someone would like to benefit from that, what is the process and what they should be expecting? Mm -hmm. So what they will expect really is a life-changing experience because we not only provide clothing, but we also provide coaching. So I myself would help them in regards to interviewing techniques and I will help them with their resume. So the way they can apply is they can contact me directly um, and I'll be more than happy to assist them or other nonprofit organizations, like for instance, um, Goodwill Industries, they would provide uh, their information to us. That's one of many other industries. So you're partnering with Goodwill? Yes. When we partner actually with a lot of organizations that do nonprofit work to help. So let's say, you know, because you know, in a community center that I manage, sometimes people come and they're a little lost in the process. I usually send them to Goodwill, but mm -hmm. Dress for, for Success help them definitely to have the look that they need. Like you're saying, you mm -hmm. know, you're never overdressed. Right. So contact you, do they have a, t do you have a time frame, like if they're like, oh, it's tomorrow, two days from now, you're too late, what is a time frame appropriate? So we would like at least a week's worth of time because what we do is we really tailor our time for that person. It's very individual attention. So if someone comes to us, it's not a group of people, it's one-on-one. -on -one. So we'll have someone there waiting for you. We'll take your information over the phone, your dress size, your shoe size, so that when you come in, everything is already laid out for you. So a week's time is normally what we need because the entire network works just with volunteers. Um, but if in a case of emergency, we'll make it work. In an emergency, like 24 hours, I will go there myself if necessary and help them. So the clothes are, it's donated clothes? It is donated items. Uh, occasionally we'll get brand new clothing that's donated by different stores or actual uh, people, 
but for the most part, it's gently used clothing. And you have different events throughout the year, isn't it? We do. You have luncheons and tell me about it. Um, most recently, we had Hats Off, mm -hmm. which is a great uh, event that we have annually where we charge a small fee and our great people in the area are honored, but we talk about the program as a whole. Our bigger event happens during Christmas time. So we have a cupcake challenge. So vendors in the area come in and do, they do a challenge. Santa Claus comes in, but it's a great event. So what is the goal of that event? The goal is really to um, get enough funding to be able to have a location um, and to be able to offer different tools that are necessary to purchase computers where people can work on and work on their resume, uh, to purchase items, just regular items that we may need for them. But most of the items that we have are donated. So what is it that the organization is in need of right now? Right now, we're in need of financial donations. Um, Herzing University has been a great host for us, so we're currently there, and they allow us to use their facility, but it is on a short-term basis, so we're not going to be there forever. So eventually, we would like to have our own space, uh, but of course, we'll be more than happy to take gently used clothing as well as brand new clothing um, and shoes and articles. We tend not to have enough larger sizes or smaller sizes. So anyone who's petite or plus size always seems to run out for us. So it would be a good number to call you because you said, um, so it's volunteer basis. So sometimes yes. you have to go also pick up clothes and things like that. Mm -hmm. It would be a good number. Uh, they're welcome to reach me at 407-721-9859. Okay. So for those women that look at you and they're like, I would like to be like her. Like so is. So it's like you need to interview her. So tell me what is it that she sees in you too? Um, you know, the passion. I think we're very similar. She and I are very similar. We're vo both very passionate about helping people. Um, we're both girls from the Bronx, um, so we consider ourselves very normal. We like to hang out, have fun like everybody else, but we're also very hard workers and very committed to helping people. So I'll be your advice for those women who look at you like, I would like to be like her. They're already like me. I'm, I'm an average person like everyone else who really just wants more. Um, I'm a mother and I have two children, uh, Sophia who's six and Gabriella who's 18. And I'm just like everyone else, I'm working every day harder and harder for my children. So basically you're saying every woman is a diamond. Sometimes we're in a rough, but we're there. Exactly. Everyone has it. Of course, you just have to shine it off. Thanks for coming, it has been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. This has been Damaris Ramos for Latino Models. Thank you and good night.